Welcome to Bark House Nature Bites. Today I'm staying next to a big patch of wild bergamot or bee balm, a native wildflower we have here in Wisconsin, to talk about an insect that many of us probably have seen, maybe in their own backyards even, maybe even at a hummingbird feeder, and those are hummingbird moths. So they're an insect that really do resemble hummingbirds, bumblebees even a little bit, um, but they're actually a moth. So there's two species, actually four in North America, there's two species we have here in Wisconsin. There's a hummingbird clearwing moth and the snowberry clearwing moth. Now, I was trying my best to have one in the shot with me. I was doing the video. I've seen them at this patch actually quite a bit lately. Um, they weren't cooperating. They move a lot. I don't know why. They're insects. They're eating. Why would they move? That's silly. Um, so I just printed a picture off for right now. I'll have some videos along, or, uh, pictures along with this video. But for these hummingbird moths, they're really, really cool critters. They're like two inches long for the ones we have here. It's so about good size. So quite a bit larger, like a bumblebee, but very similar to that of a hummingbird. The males will kind of have a flared out tail resembling that kind of like a hummingbird. To me, when they have that flared out tail especially, they look a lot like, again, to me, like a flying lobster. So I nicknamed them, I nicknamed them flying lobster, just my personal take on them. But for hummingbird moths, they're going out about right now feeding on nectar from flowers. And to do this, they have this like long tongue or mouth part called proboscis. It's right underneath their chin, if you will, underneath their head. And it's rolled up at rest. So kind of think of like a party noisemaker. How you got that and it's rolled up and then you blow into it, it extends out. It's kind of like what a proboscis is. So when they're going to go these flowers, they can extend that. And that proboscis can be uh, as long as their body or even longer than the body. So really long to reach way down the flowers. And some sp um, flowers, especially across the world, are actually adapted to be, um, to be basically just fed on by hummingbird moths. So really cool. Check it out. So for hummingbird moths, again, there's a two species. They are also called clearwing moths. There's a lot of nicknames, but they are called clearwing moths, and they're called that because they do have clear wings. For most, most moth species, they do have scales on their wings, but for clearwing moths, these hummingbird moths, they don't have some scales on those wings, so they have like a clear appearance. And they can fly up, down, backwards, all over the place, much like a hummingbird. They can fly up to 35 miles per hour, really good flyers. And right now, the males and females are feeding like crazy. And again, you can tell a male that usually that flailed out tail part. And the females eventually lay an egg underneath the leaves. The egg will hatch into a caterpillar. The caterpillar is going to eventually drop down to the ground before the fall sets in, spin a thin cocoon over winter there, and then emerge next spring. Every year, there's always different numbers of hummingbird moths. Some years a lot, sometimes a little less. So this year, I'd say it's about average. You know, I think two years ago, we had a lot of them. It was really cool to check out. Sometimes they'll even visit your hummingbird feeders. So watch for them. Maybe that hummingbird you think is actually a moth. Either way, look for them out and about, especially around the wildflowers this summer. Get up close to them. Really watch them. Fascinating to watch. Make your own choice. Do they look like a hummingbird? Do they look like a large bumblebee, a hawk, or a flying lobster? Thanks for watching Barkhouse Nature Bites.